All right, you want a stable value. You want it to be decentralized. You want it to operate at scale like money for payments, things like that. What value are you gonna use that's robustly stable? Energy is a great choice as we discussed. Oh, it has this nice property uh, that you can represent that value or price of energy on chain in a decentralized way using proof of work. Uh, great, then you issue a token called Qi in direct linear proportion to that proof of work and the cost of energy. Great, you now have emissions function for supply. What happens if there's a demand shock up or down? Well, you need to immediately soak up or add supply. So you need a second token that acts as implicit uh, collateral that is basically a scarce valuable token called QI and you set an exchange rate via decentralized kind of like ratio between them. And that acts as the buffer and or, you know, I guess like, lever to maintain that supply imbalance in or out very quickly. And then Qi as a result is not only like scarce in supply, but is kind of buoyed by market demand for Qi. That's kind of like the overview of the system. It sounds very complicated, but that's kind of it overall. Yeah, I, I mean, in, re in reality, it's really simple, right? There's really two things that are going on here. We're setting up two market equilibrium points. One is that Qi should reflect the price of production and that is electricity. Yeah. And the if if the exchange rate has matched the market perceived exchange rate, right. there will be a neutral preference by market participants. Right. By neutral preference you mean like indif indifference. Like indifference. They don't, they don't they're equal equal price basically. Yeah, there there's there's an equal amount of preference for right. converting Qi to Qi as right. there is converting Qi to Qi or mining. So like right. in aggregate the total value flows are equivalent. So right. there's net zero value going between the two. That means that the exchange rate is correct. Mm -hmm. Th that's like the two things that are nice. set up here. Um, and that's it. That th those are like the full set of assumptions and then you just design a controller against it. But so that's that's the whole thing. Before we get into like some, if there's any questions um, and bring other folks up to ask them or we can ha handle them one off. Um, real quick, I have some hypotheses about the future of the stable coin market. Um, well, well, I, I do, I do want to maybe just oh, yeah, you pop, in, yeah, you got something in, else? In, in, interject here with something. Um, the um, the other thing that you should consider here is when we're thinking about the relationship between Qi and Qi. If Qi didn't exist, Qi would have a certain emissions curve based off the natural adoption rate reflected in the hash rate. Mm -hmm. By introducing Qi, that emissions curve is necessarily um, slowed down or retarded over what it would have been if it were not for Qi. They're competitive so for, substitutes. Right, so for Qi to exist, it comes at the cost of not producing a Qi. Right. So if a miner wants to choose Qi, they did that in lieu of uh, producing a Qi. If uh, you want to mint a Qi, um, you have to choose it from a miner's perspective, or I could destroy Kwai to mint Qi. Mm -hmm. Now, conversely, obviously, then if, you know, the supply wants to shrink, um, you know, Qi has to get destroyed um, to make Kwai. So now you're minting Kwai. Um, but the, the the point that I'm trying to make is sort of the value of Qi is drawn from the value of Kwai. Mm -hmm. So if there is value in Qi, that came by... In some ways, like to, to put it simply, um, from a market perspective, every chi that's created kind of looks like somebody is buying one quai worth of chi, mm -hmm. right? So if there's suddenly a billion dollars worth of chi in the world, it meant that there's a billion dollars less of they have foregone, quai right. they have foregone of, in the world. Quai, yeah. That's right. Or they converted it. They right. literally well, destroyed well, right. it. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So they, they either slowed down the inflationary emissions or they literally took it out of circulation to create that chi. Yeah. Um, so, so Qi is very much inside of Kwai, so it, it's added to the, you know, mm -hmm. uh, total system value. It's not like you have two systems, it's you are adding utility to Kwai, and when you mint Qi, it is causing the value of Kwai to also rise. Yeah. So, yeah, in terms of like where the stable coin market goes from here, because look, we're talking about these like new, novel, kind of elegant, but still new, up and coming ideas. And we're talking about the fact that 
bottom line is today the stablecoin market is like entirely USDT and USDC, both in terms of monetary base and transaction volume. So I have some kind of like hypotheses about like how it goes from here, but I also want to hear yours. My, my two are that one, I think that the US dollar and US dollar denominated centralized stablecoins are going to continue to crush, do well, even accelerate their performance over the next five to 10 years.